Okay. Uh, yeah, home to uh, marble merlets, home to rhinoceros oclets, western purple martens, and Hearman's gulls, and Pacific great blue herons, Pacific black brant, and on and on. Let's go to a good map immediately. Okay. There you go. A map that, uh, that the Victoria Natural History Society helped me put together in 2019. Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary, a lot more than Victoria Harbor. So essentially it goes from Portage Inlet through the Gorge Waterway, Victoria Harbor, and all the way to Trial Islands, Oak Bay and Catborough Bay, 30 kilometers long. So a lot more than Victoria Harbor, a lot more than birds. You'll, I'll show you a few things tonight. So we're talking about birds, rare plants, sea mammals, marine life, and on and on. And all of this is kind of exciting because it's actually in the city. This is what makes it interesting. All this wildlife, we're not talking about something here in the middle of the central coast of British Columbia. We're talking about the marine front yard of, of Victoria. The bird sanctuary has uh, several viewpoints. Of course, I have just outlined a few here. Possibly the most used viewpoint is the Ogden Point breakwater. Just about half a million visitors there every year. Then of course, Clover Point is well known. Kitty Islet here in Oak Bay, very beautiful viewpoint. Mekmeking Point is where we have uh, sometimes outrageous bird lists coming out of there. Cattle Point is another popular viewpoint, several viewpoints, many uh, parks in the Gorge Waterway are beautiful viewpoints, uh, many sites as well in Portage Inlet and, and on and on. So let's keep moving on a little bit here. So uh, it is actually one of three historic migratory bird sanctuaries in Greater Victoria. So here is Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary. And then to the west, we've got Esquimalt Lagoon Bird Sanctuary, 1931. And to the north, we have Shoal Harbor Bird Sanctuary, also created in 1931. So uh, we have, it's not only one historic bird sanctuary we're dealing with in Greater Victoria, it's three of them, a, a rather unusual situation in Canada. Interestingly, our historic bird sanctuary here in Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary is associated with other sites uh, like the Chain Islets IBA right here, uh, it's associated with three ecological reserves. So Trial Island Ecological Reserve, the Oak Bay Islands Ecological Reserve and 10 Mile Point Ecological Reserve. It's associated with now a, what we call a KBA, Key Biodiversity Area. Well, the Trial Islands in 2022 were recognized as a key biodiversity area because of its rare plants. And by the way, we are waiting for the designation of four, five, or actually six more KBAs on the shores of this bird sanctuary in the coming year. Uh, for example, Cattle Point may become a KBA, uh, Mary Todd Island may become a, a KBA, and on and on. The bird sanctuary is also uh, associated with three rockfish conservation area, Dunsey Head, Trial Islands, and, and the Discovery Island. So we're talking about the multiple designations in and near this historic bird sanctuary. So very quickly in a nutshell, so Victoria's beautiful marine front yard, three, 30 kilometers long, 1,840 hectares of marine waters, shores, and islands, over 270 species of birds, over 30 species of mammals. By the way, the latest bird added to the list was the palaces bunting seen at Clover Point a few days ago. The latest mammal confirmed in the bird sanctuary was in Portage Inlet, uh, American beaver. The first confirmed beaver this year in 2023 in Portage Inlet. And we have uh, over 95 species at risk, uh, 40 or 50 of which are, are plants. And we'll talk about this a little later. 
The bird sanctuary is surrounded by five municipalities, Victoria, Oak Bay, Saanich, Esquimalt, and Vieux Royal. So in real life, I'm personally engaged in conversations with five park services around the bird sanctuary. We are in Lequingan traditional territory, the place to smoke herring. And of course, we are near the southern tip of Vancouver Island, a place that is rather good for wildlife, birds, mammals, fish. It's a main wildlife corridor in, in Pacific Canada. I was astounded in 2015 uh, uh, when I saw the image that uh, Stuart Clark, uh, a local photographer, put together. He made a montage that he located at Cattle Point. And uh, he didn't realize, I guess, that all the species that he put in this image, which he called Pacific Coast, are actually species that we see in this bird sanctuary it, near Cattle Point, essentially. And there's about 50 species of birds and mammals here. And yes, all of these birds are and mammals are in the bird sanctuary. It's a, it's a case of, of urban biodiversity like few other places in Canada. So yes, we have, of course, great blue heron. We have wimbrels. We've got trumpeter swans. We have brant, ospreys, western purple martins. I'll talk about them later. Surf scoters, stellar sea lions. Sea otters, I'll talk about sea otters, more about the sea otters shortly, buffle heads, and on and on. There's about 50 species in there. And all of them are have been confirmed in Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary. So this is almost the bird sanctuary in one glimpse. Also, a huge story in this bird sanctuary is about rare plants. In fact, uh, if you're a botanist, uh, the, the, the plant story is much bigger than the bird story. Uh, we've got uh, several iconic uh, endangered plants. I will just, I'm just showing four of them here from the Trial Islands. Arguably the most iconic is the golden paintbrush. We have a maritime meadow on the Trial Islands that is quite a few golden paintbrushes. Victoria's owl clover one of the most endangered species uh, in the bird sanctuary. 95, 99% of the global population of Victoria's owl clover grows on the trial islands. And other species like the bear's foot senecal and the seaside bird's foot uh, lotus. So it's a lot more than birds, a lot of rare plants. It's really exciting. If you are, a, I'm not even a serious botanist and I find this exciting myself. Uh, long story short, so let's go back 100 years ago and compare with today. What's the story? What was the story in uh, 1923? Essentially, we were facing 100 years ago massive declines in bird populations caused by overhunting and uh, caused including market hunting. Uh, the Pacific Black Brant was heavily hunted. Delicious meat, by the way, known for its great, uh, the quality of its meat. It was hunted by market hunters in the Salish Sea, uh, sold to hotels, restaurants, and public markets. So this is a, one of the background stories that uh, led to the establishment of the bird sanctuary, a lot of hunting. Uh, in 2023, the story, well, is, is quite different. We're not dealing with hunting anymore. But by the way, I must say that black brant were hunted in Oak Bay into the late 19th, 1970s, early 1980s. So there were there was hunting going on for many, many decades after 1923. 2023, so we have some of one of the best natural environments in urban Canada. And this historic bird sanctuary finds itself in the middle of it all. It's home to rare species and species at risk, like the marble merlet, the golden paintbrush, and the Olympia oysters in the Gorge Waterway. I will show you some Olympia oysters shortly. And today, the story is a lot about restoration, recovery, and urban renewal. We are restoring nature 
and it's fueling urban renewal, arguably so. I hope that everybody can hear me well. Just to show you some signage from the past, uh, they are self-explanatory. Those are two signs that we found in Sydney in Shoal Harbor Bird Sanctuary. Uh, they were there, well, until just a few years ago, but they were arguably installed, I believe, in the 70s by the Canadian Wildlife Service. So you can see a lot of uh, shooting around uh, well into the 1970s. I don't know if you remember the old signs from the 60s and 70s at Esquimalt Lagoon, also talking about no hunting, no shooting. So that was the story in the past. And today, well, again, it's a story of nature in the city, some of the best nature in the city in urban Canada. I wanted to show you a few more pictures that the brand are still with us today. We see them at, uh, at Cattle Point every spring. We don't see many brand wintering here anymore very much. Uh, thanks Liam Reagan for giving me this picture here of a brand, a black brand with a, with a ring. I just wanted to show you some brand decoys. So just to show you how much uh, these, I found a household in Oak Bay a few years ago that still had about 30 decoys of brand in their garage. I was quite amazed. So there is a history of hunting brand in this region, not anymore, but there are still decoys in some garages. It's kind of interesting. I had to show you the Pacific Black, Black Brand painted by Finnick Lands Down, a masterpiece of sort. I will uh, talk about Finnick Lands Down a little further on. A former resident of Oak Bay who died in 2008, and he illustrated many, many of the bird species that are in this bird sanctuary. In fact, there is no other bird sanctuary in Canada associated with such a rich uh, artistic legacy. Just to show you a few pictures, uh, sometimes it's astoundingly beautiful in Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary. This is McNeil Bay with a view of Greater Trial Island, January 2020, a break in the rain. And uh, this is the kind of scenery we have here. We don't even notice it anymore. It's so much in our face, but uh, we're dealing with a bird sanctuary with a lot of natural beauty. It's just a matter of fact. Another important site in, in the bird sanctuary is Telecom Narrows in the Gorge Waterway under the Gorge Bridge. And uh, just want to show you, uh, this is so the reversing rapids, an unusual situation. And this is the home of the spirit rock of Camosung, which is right here. Hey, uh, Camosung and her grandfather were transformed into a rock by Hale is the Transformer. I will show you the story in a minute. A sacred site for the Songhees, for the First Nations here. With the sacred foam, people used to bathe in there. To, to bathe in the sacred foam was a good luck. And a site with uh, over 4,000 years of um, human occupation in that very site. So uh, human beings have been uh, here for a long time and and it just this just happens to be this sacred site right in the middle of this historic bird sanctuary. We have several important First Nation sites, and this is arguably the most important one. Uh, so much so that the, uh, dist the district of Saanich in 2010 installed this monument to Kemosung. She's sitting on Pacific herring, on coho salmon, on eelgrass, on buffalo heads and Olympia oysters. And let's just read together very quickly, uh, Camosung, an ancient uh, Songhee story tells of a young girl named Camosung turned to stone by Halis the Transformer. Camosung is believed to have spirit powers and is associated with protecting the local food resources like coho salmon, Pacific herring, Olympia oysters and all the ducks for the Songhees people. So this uh, sculpture was put together by 
district of Saanich, their public art program. They hired Fred Dubbs and they consulted the Songhees. And well, I go visit this monument. It's right next to the Victoria Canoe and Kayak Club. I go there quite often. The story of Kamosang is quite important for us. And if I were the king of Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary, I would possibly even rename the bird sanctuary as the Kamosang Urban Nature Sanctuary. That would be a better name for today, I believe, but uh, let's move on. Other sites here in the bird sanctuary, we have Portage Inlet, very quiet for birds in the summertime, but uh, quite busy with birds in the wintertime, buffleheads and, and lesser scop and even canvasbacks. Beautiful area with uh, surrounded by three estuaries, the Colquitts estuary, the Craig Flower estuary, and uh, the hospital estuary. I will show you the hospital creek estuary in a minute. Interestingly, uh, so three estuaries around Portage Inlet, which is itself arguably a large estuary. And then in Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary, we have altogether six small estuaries. Hospital Creek, Craig Flower, Colquitts, Gorge Creek, Cecilia Creek, and Barker Creek. And uh, two of these estuaries of these creeks are salmon bearing at present with coho salmon and with cutthroat trout. And Barker Creek uh, uh, in 2022 uh, had uh, chum salmon eggs put into it. So we expect chum salmon to return next year in 2024. So uh, a, a large area of Portage Inlet and several estuaries throughout the bird sanctuaries. The story is, is often a little bigger than we think. Another big story that uh, is important is the wintering bird story. So of course, uh, Greater Victoria, the Salish Sea and our historic bird sanctuaries, including Victoria Harbor bird sanctuaries are busier as a rule in the winter time than they are in the summertime. Lots of ducks and loons and grebes and shorebirds come to winter here. And uh, one of the most interesting stories is the story of the buffleheads. Uh, there has been a 25 year study uh, carried out at the, in Roberts Bay in Shoal Harbor Bird Sanctuary in Sydney, indicating that uh, their, ret their return essentially on October 15th, they start returning on October 15th, the first wave. Every year, they are very punctual. It's a neat story. So uh, we are waiting for the return of the Buffleheads. This weekend, all Buffleheads Day will be celebrated in, in uh, Roberts Bay. By the way, yeah, up to uh, 150 species of birds have been recorded in Greater Victoria in the wintertime. It's a Canadian record. I have to say a word about the Gorge Waterway Initiative. They've been very busy since 2005 with various initiatives. I cannot even begin to summarize what they've been doing, uh, particularly in, in Portage Inlet and the Gorge Waterway, but they have put signs. This sign here is on the Craig Flower Bridge. This sign here is near the Helmkin Tidal March in Helmkin Centennial Park in View Royal. So the Gorge Waterway has been active now for, uh, well, 20 years, done a lot of projects here and there, and we are very grateful to the CRD uh, and this initiative to help us revitalize the historic bird sanctuary. So what kind of birds are we talking about? My favorite birds in the bird sanctuary are the ox or the alcids. All of those have been photographed around. This is right outside of Victoria Harbor, thanks to Manuel Martel for his picture. This young of the year marble merlet hung around my kayak for about half an hour uh, near the Trial Islands a few years ago. The young of the year wasn't shy, stayed with me. We've got pigeon guillemots, of course, coming all the time. And common murs. Actually, there's a rafts of common murs right now coming through. So uh, this bird sanctuary is actually has provides a lot of nice auk viewing in an urban environment. It's it's kind of unusual to see these birds in the city, to see marble merlets even in Victoria, 
Outer Harbor. More arcs. I just want to mention this picture here. I was busy taking this picture of a marble murlet in McNeil Bay. And, and I didn't realize that as I clicked, an ancient murlet just popped up behind. So I ended up with, uh, with uh, a marble murlet and an ancient murlet in the same picture. Uh, in 2020, in 2010, by the way, folks, I was surrounded around Oak Bay Islands by about five to 600 marble murlets in 2010. And this is when I realized, well, there is a lot more here than, than we may think. Uh, Daniel Donaghy recently has reported uh, up to 8,000 ancient murlets going by 10 mile point in one hour. So those are significant numbers. We see Cassin's Auklets coming by. And of course, the Horn Puffin uh, photo by Andy McDonald earlier this year in Victoria Outer Harbor, a photo from the Ogden Point breakwater. So it's always interesting to watch for ox. Another big story, part of the revitalization of this historic bird sanctuary is our the coming back of our Western purple martins. There are now seven sites with nesting boxes. Uh, this, these are some of the, West, the boxes from West Bay in Victoria Harbor. We have a colony at the Oak Bay Marina. We have one in Catborough Bay at Royal Yacht uh, Club. Uh, we have one on the Selkirk waterfront. Well, we have seven sites with nesting boxes at present. And in the summer, I don't know, like this summer was a warm summer. And I heard Western purple martins basically every day. It's fantastic. A male on top, a female with a dragonfly, and a, a nestling. This nestling was photographed uh, at the Selkirk waterfront. Another big story for us folks is the invasive resident Canada geese. Who would have thought, well, a hundred years ago, there were basically no geese left. This is why the Migratory Bird Convention was agreed upon with the United States. Uh, so Canada geese have been, several subspecies have been introduced in our part of the world and now they've become invasive. Uh, we've got well over a thousand Canada geese in the bird sanctuary. In fact, I want you to look at the uh, lesser trial island here in Oak Bay with uh, 39 nests. It's, one, it's a very high density of nesting Canada geese. Actually, I think this year they had up to 40 nests. Uh, we've been addling eggs there for many years. The geese are degrading the rare plant habitat. It's a huge problem. Same thing in the Gorge Waterway. We believe that the geese are degrading the eelgrass beds, but the story is not so clear. So we sent the yogi down, Joachim Karasfeld from the World's Fisheries Trust to look for damage to the eelgrass beds. And it was hard to see the real damage. And in fact, now we think that the Canada geese may be thinning the eelgrass beds. Uh, this year in 2023, the eelgrass beds seem to be in better health than ever. It's a difficult story, but there are certainly too many. Look at all the Canada geese here on the beach at Gorge Creek, estuary in the Gorge Water. A lot of geese. It's, it's a big conversation that we're having. And we are adding more eggs uh, next year, and there will probably be a hunt uh, starting soon in, in, in our region, we'll see. They're already hunting geese on the Saanich Peninsula. And we want to reduce the number of adults around uh, Victoria really badly. We'll see how it goes. And we got surprises all the time. I must say it's exciting. The latest surprises I mentioned to you, the palaces bunting uh, reported by Les Peterson, first Canadian record at Clover Point just a few days ago. This kind of stuff is, is always exciting to the bird watchers, not necessarily to the general public. Uh, last year, we had the Nazca booby at Trial Islands, generated a lot of interest. Nice picture here from a whale watcher, Tesli Shah. So we often get surprises like this. This is pretty interesting. 
Uh, look at this. this is another exciting picture that I was uh, sent uh, not too long ago by Stephanie Gurney, an Esquimalt resident. She managed to capture with her cell phone a great horned owl hunting buffalo heads at night. She was uh, sitting on the rocks there along the West Bay walkway. She heard a big splash. She grabbed her phone and there you go, great horned owl, a buffalo head, an amazing story. There, there are a few documented stories of, of uh, predators hunting ducks at night. And it happened right here in West Bay in Victoria Harbor. Thank you, Stephanie, for sending your picture. Uh, some interesting stories, that story, uh, I had people calling me all the way from Eastern Canada about this. Uh, this is in, nine, uh, this is in uh, 2020. Those are all my pictures of a bald eagle that was hunting gulls around the trial island and was not successful. And this uh, bald eagle decided, okay, he saw a floating baby harbor seal floating in the surface, went for it, grabbed it, and swam with it to shore. And uh, again, there's very few uh, photograph records of bald eagles hunting actively Pacific harbor seals. This harbor seal was alive, I believe. It was not a dead seal. And this was a hungry bald eagle, couldn't get a gull, had no fish available, so it went for a baby seal. An amazing story. I just put this picture in, I just love it. I, I took this picture in 2020 without fully realizing what I was doing. And then I went back home and here it is, the brown pelican just below the lighthouse at Trial Island with some Hearman's gulls. Just a beautiful summer picture, typical of our bird sanctuary, Hearman's gulls and brown pelicans. And this could be, it looks like it's in this court, the Sea of Cortez in Mexico, for heaven's sakes. But these birds come from farther south and they move into the uh, Salish Sea in the summertime and a lot of them in the bird sanctuary. It's quite exciting to be able to see these kinds of things right here in Victoria. It looks like a photo taken in Mexico. A few more things, a lot more than birds. Look at the salmon coming through the Vic Victoria Harbor every year. Coho salmon up the Craig Flower uh, Creek and up the Colquitts River, three, four hundred of them in each river, more or less at this point, a lot less than in the past. But we've got Gary here, a volunteer with the Esquimalt Anglers, manning the fence and, and Dorothy Chamber, our own uh, sound urban salmon warrior. And today, uh, the, both fences, by the way, have had huge problems with river otters. And the, uh, the river otters have been busy eating a lot of salmon. So the, the fences have been closed down. So, and uh, this uh, fence has been, there is now a camera uh, in it. So people are actually counting the salmon going by instead of catching them. And the salmon fence at Craig Flower Creek is now closed. So the salmon is, can go through at will. So it's, it's hard to imagine this fish swam by Ogden Point Breakwater through Victoria Harbor, through the Gorge Waterway, up Portage Inlet and, and the Craig Flower Creek. It's kind of interesting story. Another exciting story recently, you've seen this picture, you know, Bay, a crazy picture. These are the transient T069 uh, spy hopping near the Oakby Marina. It made quite a sensation in Victoria Harbor. This is just the last week, two weeks ago in Victoria Harbor, six to 10 uh, transient killer whales. For the first time, they actually swam to the Selkirk trestle in the Selkirk water. So these, uh, these uh, killer whales have become very present in the bird sanctuary. I know I am a frequent kayaker in the bird sanctuary. I now I encounter killer whales quite regularly. It's quite uh, amazing. These killer whales are attracted by Pacific harbor seals, which are themselves attracted possibly by herring in the harbor. We'll talk about herring a little later. Not much herring compared to the past, but still quite a bit. Uh, two more pictures I had to show you, uh, the, the two pictures that went viral when they were taken. 
the giant Pacific octopus catching a baby gull. This happened at the Ogden Point Breakwater in 2012. A lady from Langford took the picture. The picture went viral. And uh, in 2015, Pacific Harbor Seal catching an octopus. These pictures also went viral. Folks, I still receive emails from people from the UK, for example, asking me where they can see this. So we still talk about these two events in 2023. The pictures went out there and they are still being talked about. The giant Pacific octopus is, is, is a major player here in the bird sanctuary, as you can imagine. Let's keep going. I just want to go on a little, a little faster here. Of course, we've got elephant seals now, the return of the, we see them molting in the bird sanctuary now every year on Gonzalez Beach. Uh, this is near the marina in Oak Bay. Emerson, we knew it was tag. It, we knew we know where it was born, near Anacortes on Hidalgo Island. Last year, came to Malt in Oak Bay, spent an entire month on the beach. There were self-appointed seal gardens who kept the people and the dogs away. And Emerson actually spent a month in Oak Bay. It was a spectacular thing to see an elephant seal molting throughout an entire month. A little surprise here, folks, you, you're not surprised about river otters. They're here all the time, everywhere, from one end of the bird sanctuary to the other. But uh, these days we've got a, well, we've had sea otters every year now. And this one is around Trial Islands at present. It's been seen three or four times. I've actually bumped into it from my kayak just a few days ago. So the sea otters are showing up. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's a return. And we don't expect them that much in the Salish Sea, but now we see them every year. And as you may know, there has been one in Race Rocks for about a decade now. So it's an interesting, exciting story in our bird sanctuary. As you can see, it's a lot more than birds. 30 species of mammals, from humpback whales to North American beaver and even uh, sea otters. Big story that I want to share. So one of the big conversations that I'm having with various people uh, through my group here, the Friends of Victoria Harbor, we talk a lot about herring and herring recovery. The missing ingredient, well, we still have herring. This photo was taken here at Turkey Head by the OB Marina, by Liam Regan, just a few, two years ago. We still have herring, of course, but we need a lot more. Uh, what, what fraction of the herring is left in the Salish Sea? Nobody knows. Some people, uh, it's easily less than 10%, possibly less than 5%. And some serious people say could be barely 1% of what we used to have 200 years ago. And you have to remember, folks, that uh, the Songhees people used to rake the herring out of the ocean. They had herring rakes uh, today. Uh, it's unimaginable that you could rake herring out of the ocean. Good news for 2023, as reported by our friends Eagle Wing Whale Watchers, they have witnessed a river of herring, so a heck of a lot of herring around race rocks in 2023 with tens of thousands of gulls and 20 humpback whales. So. We are seeing signs of recovery, but, but we have a long ways to go. Three important forage fishes. I just want to briefly mention Pacific herring, Pacific sandlands. We see uh, today again, I saw feeding frenzies in McNeil Bay on Pacific sandlands and surf smelt. Uh, let me, uh, I wanted to show you a surf smell just to bring on the next story, the, our story of restoration at in Victoria Harbor at Lime Bay Park, next to Victoria International Marina. This is one example of a restoration project in Victoria Harbor by Peninsula Stream and Shoreline Society with the city of Victoria. The beach was created in September, 2022. Three weeks and a half later, the surf smelt were spawning on it. An amazing success story. There's the eggs. 
one of the eggs that they found. Uh, last week, by the way, the, the totem pole was installed, the welcome pole rather was installed at Lime Bay Park. The beach is there. The Songhees First Nation came in. We had an official ceremony. It was just a beautiful day at a beautiful event in a restored site. We thank the city of Victoria for being behind this. And we thank the Peninsula Stream and Shoreland Society for being such keen participants. Very quickly, I just want to show you a few more pictures. We do have a lot of good habitat in this bird sanctuary. People say, oh, it's all gone, it's all degraded, but well, we have healthy kelp forests. And in fact, uh, anecdotally, I can tell you I, at, in 2022, 2023, I don't see any sign of having less kelp around like we hear about from other parts of the coastal British Columbia. The kelp forests appear very good at many sites in Enterprise Channel around the Trial Islands near the Ogden Point breakwater. This kelp is used by several species of birds, gulls and even black turnstones. We have, well, still very good beds of eelgrass in this bird sanctuary, more than you could think. 80 hectares of healthy eelgrass in the Gorge Waterway and Portage Inlet, this is near Tilikum Narrows, just near the Gorge Bridge. Very nice bed of eelgrass. We also have several patches of surf grass at many, many locations. Uh, this is Lesser Trial Island, but here is the Hillman's Gulls at very low tide, just having a, a rest on a patch of eelgrass, a very nice typical scene. These two scenes are very typical of what we see in our historic bird sanctuary. A lot more than birds, well, we have Olympia oysters in the Gorge Waterway near these beds of eelgrass, a species at risk. The Olympia oysters appear to be coming back. Hey, we've got countless thousands of them and it's kind of interesting. Uh, Liam uh, Reagan, just not too long ago, a few, a few weeks ago, even photography, a sea hare, Taylor's sea hare in the, in the eelgrass in the Gorge Waterway. This is basically an indicator of clean water. These, uh, these uh, nudibranchs usually don't occur where the, dirt, the water is very dirty. So it may be telling us that the water in the Gorge Waterway is actually quite clean. In fact, the water in the Gorge Waterway is so clean now that people have been swimming. This is Bamfield Park, Selkirk Trestle. The Gorge Waterway is, is behind us here, uh, a, a popular swimming site uh, since 2000. So people have been already swimming in the Gorge Waterway for 23 years. It's a success story. I don't know if you can hear uh, in this, there's a colony of purple martins right nearby. And when I took this picture there, I could hear purple martins in the sky. It was a pleasant situation. Just a few more shots, uh, big story folks, uh, restoration, restoration, restoration. Uh, there is so many restoration programs in the harbor, in the bird sanctuary, that I cannot list them all. And, uh, and I will just mention three of them right here, right now, the restoration of the Trial Islands that began 20 years ago uh, in the year 2000 under the direction of uh, botanist Matt Fair Barnes. This is Broom Mountain. So a huge pile of scotch broom and ivy. Uh, tons and tons of invasive plants have been taken off the island by boat, but many have been left there. It just shows you the extent. It's a, it's a huge project, it's very successful. The trial islands are coming back to life. It's one of many projects in the bird sanctuary. Another project that just happened the phase two of the restoration of Gorge Creek Estuary in the Scramble Gorge Park. Uh, a very nice initiative. Phase one was in 2005, phase two in 2022, and phase three next year. I'll talk about it a bit more later. Uh, Laurel Point, where the Babco plant used to be, British American Paint Company, very toxic site, tons and tons of of marine sediments have been taken out and the entire point has been taken out, the soil replaced with clean soil. 
a project of Transport Canada. They spent $25 million there. And I don't know, there's many, many projects. I, I have just, I will just mention the restoration of Rock Bay in Victoria Harbor, $150 million spent there by Transport Canada and BC Hydro. Uh, I must mention even the construction of our new sewage uh, plant at McLaughlin Point, uh, McLaughlin Point. Still a controversial story for many, but we do not have two outfalls of raw sewage anymore in the bird sanctuary. This, the waste uh, water treatment plant has been built two years ago. $780 million were spent, a lot of money. And all of this is uh, likely to have, have positive impacts uh, in the local marine ecosystems. By the way, we're trying to put a list of all the uh, restoration sites in Victoria Harbor and Esquimalt Harbor. There's many of them, and possibly the the figure is as big as two billion dollars spent in the last thirty or forty years. Two billion dollars. So it's it's a lot of money. It's a huge effort, and we're grateful to it. Another little example here at the uh, Hospital Creek Estuary building goose fences to keep the Canada geese from moving in. And the sedges were planted in the estuary. This is just uh, earlier this year in Portage Inlet, Peninsula Stream and Shoreline Society with uh, View Royal are involved here. And uh, let's see what happens. It's just one more project in one more estuary. Uh, these goose fences work very well, by the way, folks. Uh, the geese, need a place to land and take off from. They need a bit of a tarmac. And if you put uh, fences along the tidal marshes, they seem to not go into them. They cannot fly in and fly out. So they don't go there. It seems to work very well. Several plugs of Lingby's sedges were planted earlier this year. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Few more pictures just to show you what, what I am up to as the chair of the Friends of Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary. We've been busy installing signs at Cattle Point in 2017, thanks to Oak, the District of Oak Bay for their help. We've put a tribute to Fennec lands down at Queens Park in Oak Bay, where Fennec used to go every morning with his children, watch the birds in the morning light. Bizarrely, strangely, this uh, renowned bird artist of global significance was not celebrated in Greater Victoria until we put this tribute to them, to him at Queen's Park. And the Victoria Natural History Society was involved along with the Kiwanis Club of Oak Bay and Nature Canada. They're another neat little project. And uh, and of course, we have new signage now in Gorge Creek Estuary, just installed a few months ago. We hope to see signs installed at many other locations, at Clover Point, for example, at Cattle Point, along the West Bay Walkway. There is a lot of things to highlight at, along these viewpoints. Just one of my last pictures, what are we up to for 2024? Uh, phase three of uh, uh, the restoration of Gorge Creek Estuary in Esquimal Gorge Park. This is the Gorge Waterway. This is Gorge Creek coming out here, hard to see. Uh, a plan, this was supposed to unfold, well, to have unfolded in August and September, 2023. Uh, it didn't happen for various reasons. Now it's planned for the spring of 2024. It will be the last phase of the restoration of Gorge Creek Estuary. Uh, the township of Esquimalt is very involved, the CRD, of course, and the BC Stewardship Center through its Green Shore program. So uh, Pacific Salmon Foundation as well, and the federal government. So about, uh, I don't know, about $300,000 being spent there again. That's nice. And... Uh, uh, what was it? I just forgot what I want. Just lost my train of thought. So this is one more project happening soon, and and we we are hoping for more uh, restorations. Uh, for example, in Barker Creek Estuary, in the coming years, in Old Bay. So we have our celebrations. 
three days, October 26, 27, and 28. We've got programs, family programs at five locations. Please, folks, go to our website, see for yourself. You're welcome to participate. We have a talk on Saturday night by Rob Butler talking about crows, the Society of Crows. I am very, very thankful to the Centennial Committee for helping out with this. I, I am not pushing very hard at this point. I'm just being sucked into it, essentially. <laughs> and uh, you are uh, invited to join us. It's one of the, it's an interesting event. Once every hundred years, I guess. Just want to thank you for your participation. I mean, it was a little longer than expected. You can go see my own website, vicharborbirds.ca, the website of the Centennial Committee, and the Naturehood website, of course. Naturehood is a Nature Canada initiative to uh, connect Canadians to nearby nature. And uh, is it ever happening in Greater Victoria? In fact, we possibly arguably have the best naturehood in Canada. And a lot of people are already very connected to nearby nature in Victoria. So we're not uh, reinventing the wheel here. We're just making it happen even more. Thank you very much. Look at the brown pelican here. John, John Gillivet is the lighthouse keeper. Trial Islands, and he sends me pictures all the time. And there was a, yet another brown pelican on Trial Islands early September. They seem to be always there. In fact, a flock of 50 brown pelicans were reported going by the other day. So more than you would think. Thank you very much for your time, folks. Jacques, thank you so very much for this presentation. I want to say personally that that was so positive and so inspiring. And I'm just so grateful to you for focusing on all the amazing work that's being done. That was awesome. Um, you've had a few lovely messages come in via chat. I do want to throw the door open to any questions. So if anyone has anything to ask Jacques, please uh, let us see you and unmute and ask away. Everyone is shy and quiet, Jacques. <laughs> this presentation is recorded and will be made available, so I can send it out. Oh, Susanna, hi. Do you have a question for Jacques? Well, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but I noticed that when I go around the different areas, some of the signage is newer and is really eye-catching, and some of the signage is older and smaller and harder to read. And I wonder if there's a signage plan for this area. Good, difficult question. Uh, the issues I'm dealing with, so uh, I have to deal with the federal government, Environment Canada, but uh, all the signs are installed in, diff in five different municipalities. So when it comes, we have been providing some signage and it has been successfully or not so su successfully installed over the years. Uh, I, I have no control over what the staff of the, very the five municipal park service are doing. So is there room for improvement? Well, you better believe it. And hopefully we'll have a handle of this in, in the coming years. <laughs> it's just, I don't really have total control over that situation. By the way, I hope to see myself uh, something serious, a serious viewpoint develop at Clover Point, one of the best viewpoints in the bird sanctuary. It is strange that in 2023, we still have nothing there. And this will have to be organized with the city of Victoria, the Park Service of Victoria. And uh, well, they are very, very busy people. It's easier said than done. But it would be fantastic to see a nice viewpoint with nice signage installed in the, at Clover Point in the near future. If you are, uh, if why not write to Marion Alto and ask her about this? That would be one way to address it. Thank you. Yeah, I will definitely do that. I spend a lot of time at Clover Point. I live very close by, and um, it would be great to see a more nature scaping in there. Fewer dogs in the middle of it dogs off the beach, all of that. I don't need to tell you, but um, 
And I talked to them a lot about like the fact that they let the barn swallows nest this year without washing their nests away, that kind of thing. So I certainly will follow up with another letter. Yes. Uh, so as you know, that on the Dallas uh, seafront, the Dallas beaches, the Dallas, it's a complicated scene with with the dogs and we we have now some enforcement by the way uh, enforcement officers are are doing something a few days every month it's minimal but there's been some interesting developments in the last year so it's it's difficult thank you gail yeah i have a comment it's sticky hi Jacques. that was terrific I love to hear you speak, and it's a great story. Um, and I also hope to see a lot of people at the events coming up at the end of the month. So please check out the website. And we're hoping for, I I'm on the committee with Shog. I'm hoping for a lot of good attendance and um, donations. There's a silent auction. And hoping to build a conservation and education fund for the future for the next hundred years, because there's still work to be done. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Vicky. You. Jacques, um, there was an important question that just was asked in the chat. Very simply, can you tell us how people can get more involved in some of these projects? Uh, well, I would, uh, if you want to get involved into restoration projects. Is that would be a suggestion. There are several teams at work here and there. So you want to identify a team working at a site and you may want to join a restoration effort like in Uplands Park or Cattle Point. Or, or you may want to get to know what the Peninsula Stream and Shoreline Society is up to and become one of their volunteers. This I often volunteers to their projects. It's, it's one group that needs volunteers. So uh, as for uh, if you want to see things happen, uh, you can help us uh, by writing to your municipal politicians and telling them that the story of this historic federal microbird sanctuary is, is of importance and you would like the municipality to help with uh, more signage, for example. There's different things you could be doing. Do you happen to know offhand if there's a working group at Clover Point? Uh, at Clover Point, there is no, uh, no, the, the Friends of Beacon Hill Park are the, mm -hmm. the nearest group. And uh, interestingly, uh, I believe the city of Victoria st is still not uh, accepting volunteers in their parks following the pandemic. It's a bit unusual. When you look at what's happening in Saanich, uh, Saanich, uh, the pulling together program, this is, um, if you want to join, they have 45 projects in Saanich, restoring habitat in various natural areas and parks. So Saanich is very active with the pulling together program. That's a good place to inquire if you want to join a team. Great advice, excellent. Okay, Jacques, I think that may be it. So again, on behalf of VNHS, thank you so much for presenting tonight. This has been fantastic. I will do my best to make the recording available to all very quickly in the next couple of days. And we'll look forward to seeing everyone at the next presentation event. Thank you. Thank you.